What's the weirdest thing that you've seen at someone's house that they thought was completely normal? Their mother cooked five different dinners from scratch every day. They each decided what they wanted and she just cooked it for them all three children husband and herself. When I went round the first time she seemed insulted that I didn't want anything special and just had what my friend was having. It must have taken her hours as they all chose to eat at different times as well. Not the weirdest but I always ate one meal with my whole family. 12 year old me was out of his comfort zone. I would totally do this if I had the money and more people to feed. I love making dinners. Rather than a garbage can, my friend's family had a room to throw away their garbage. A room that served no other purpose than a garbage can. I asked him what they were going to do when it was full, and he just said it wasn't their problem because they were moving in a few months. Even if you're moving wouldn't you rather not have rotting piles of garbage in your house? What a bunch of dongs. I went to someone's house where no joke, they wouldn't flush the toilets until they were at full capacity. The entire top floor just reeked of crap. It was disgusting. One time I saw the scooping crap and soggy TP into a bucket and throwing it in the backyard. I wish I was joking. This is what I wanted. Was playing on a console in the lounge when there was a scream, and his little brother ran past, 12-ish, followed by his naked little sister, 14-ish, screaming at him. Apparently he keeps creeping into the bathroom to watch her shower, my friend, and his parents thought it was hilarious, none of them seemed to find it weird, and no there was no lock on the bathroom door, not sure why. Sometimes families are weird, they can't wrap their heads around other family members being a certain way, so something that's obvious to anybody else is just not possible to them. You see a pervy kid that needs to have boundaries explained to him and you're probably right, but the family can't even wrap their heads around the possibility of their son actually creeping on their daughter. Everything lit up. The picture of his grandparents light up. His clock lights up. His speakers light up. Freaking everything light up. Sounds like an average tech nerd's house. Computer lights up. Mouse lights up. Keyboard lights up. Server lights up. Server racks light up. RAM cards light you I mean up. I had a best friend all through elementary and middle school. I was over his house practically every day. One day, his mom gave him a meal of cooked spaghetti noodles and a bowl of milk and gave me one as well. It was the strangest meal I've ever seen. He loved it. I did not hung out many times after that and never once saw him eat a bowl of milk spaghetti. Fricked up. It makes a great side dish for milk steak and jelly beans. Served raw of course. My childhood friend invited me over after not hanging out for a few years. We were both teenagers. We got on the subject of fricking, and she pulled out a little shoebox from under her bed. She had saved every CM filled condom from her and her BF. Tied in a knot and in a pile of about 50. I didn't know what else to say, so I was like, cool. Went home shortly thereafter and didn't speak to her again. Maybe I was too harsh. Maybe not. A treasure chest filled with a wide variety of corn cobs, leather masks, and whips. Just chillin' in the upstairs hallway. From the flip side of things, invited a Chinese girl over to our house during Christmas because the campus gets pretty deserted. I figured Christmas was going to seem strange to her and we were all prepared to answer questions. But it wasn't Christmas that really surprised her. She's sitting on the couch and the cat jumps up next to her and she just freezes. What's wrong I ask? What is that she asks, completely seriously. What do you think it is my wife asked? It looks like a small lion. My wife laughed and said she was close. Told it was called a cat and it lived in the house. The Chinese woman asked what the cat wanted. So my wife showed her how to pet the cat. The Chinese woman was delighted about how soft the cat was. Spent the rest of the evening petting the cat. Never thought that I'd ever run into an adult who'd never seen or interacted with a cat. I can only imagine how it looked from her point of view or what story she told the folks back home. A friend of mine has owned a couple of goats and a few years ago he decided to buy a goat statue to put by his front door. It's not a goat, it's a statue of Satan. He decided he likes the Satan statue so it's still by his front door. He's all like well the statue is nice, might as well worship the prince of darkness now and forever. I stay at my best friend's house a lot because she still lives with her family and it's kind of nice being around them. One time, 
Her dad left the door open while he was taking a crap and as I walked past he just nodded hello at me and continued reading his newspaper. When I told her about it and she just shrugged and was like so, I am a dude, so maybe he was just showing me who's boss. My dad did this once while he had horrible diarrhea. I was like 6 or 7. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye while walking past. Heard some blasts. Kept walking. When I was 12 I had a friend whose older sister had Down syndrome. She was a few years older and about twice the size. They regularly beat the crap out of each other. She would go into these fits of anger and pummel my friend in his face and sometimes even body slam him which usually ended with her sitting on top of him. This was a normal occurrence and I never got used to it. I don't care if she has Down syndrome. The parents should have done something. My dog died a few years ago. He was a beloved member of the family and we were all pretty torn up about it. My mom and dad decided to have him cremated. A few weeks later, I came home from college and saw the urn. Right in the middle of the coffee table, I said mom, is that the dog and she said yes, dear, and then my dad shouted angrily he liked to watch TV. Not to be insensitive about your dog passing, but for some reason I picture your dad as Jerry Stiller on an episode of Seinfeld yelling. He liked to watch TV. The cats walked all over the table during dinner. One started eating off my plate and when I gently nudged it away I got yelled at for interfering with the free choice of another living being. 12 year old me was pretty freaked out. I do happen to be very fond of cats myself. Mine are not allowed on the counters or table, which means they don't do it when we are looking. So I always clean those surfaces right before I cook, just in case. Living with animals of any kind is always interesting. Bugs. I was at this girl's house once for a sleepover party when I was a teenager and there were bugs and she thought it was totally normal. It started off with ants in the living room. Everyone was grossed out. Then when we were all going to go to bed, one of the girls found a tick on her pillow and the girl whose house it was said oh yeah, they come off my dog all the time. Last time I went over to her house. Ro. I don't know about American ticks. But those in Germany can easily transfer very dangerous diseases. Their parents were in the same room saying nice things to each other and not yelling at their kids. I've heard there's some families that don't even hit their kids. My friend has a 6 foot alien statue in her hallway, which wears a beanie hat with a marijuana leaf on the front of it, and is holding a huge spliff. Turns out her dad staggered home drunk with it one night and now it's almost part of their family. Always strikes me as odd when someone has cat crap all over the floor in a room rooms and thinks nothing of it. I know a couple that lets their dog crap in their house instead of taking it outside. Just lets it fester. Ruined two nice apartments so far. A bowl of olives on top of the toilet. I knew a family that microwave cutlery all the time. Spoon still in a coffee cup for example. I asked if the sparks tipped them off that they shouldn't do it, but they said that it didn't bother them. My ex spot dealer lived in a storage unit with his family. He had no problem inviting people over. The house was mine, and I thought this was completely normal until later on in life. A little backstory, my family went to Catholic church every Sunday. Other than just going to church, our family wasn't really that religious. Every Friday evening we would go grocery shopping, the whole family. One Friday night, we were in traffic and a motorcycle flies by and clips the side of a vehicle. The girl flies off the back and the guy's leg ends up being caught in something and twists like 8 times. I was 8 years old when this happened and remember it like it was yesterday. Well, my mom runs into a nearby business to call 9 one, one. This was way before cell phones. And they clear the accident. On our way home, my dad says that we are going to say the rosary. If you're Catholic, or religious at all, you know about the rosary. It's prayers that you repeat, over, and over, and over, etc. Thinking that would be the only night that happened, my dad decides to say the rosary every night. At 6pm, we had to be in the living room, on our knees and it lasted for an hour. Then we'd eat supper and get ready for bed. This went on for a long time. I had a friend over one night, we were playing video games in my room when my dad came to get me for rosary. I told my friend to continue playing games until I come back. Nope, 
My dad said he had to participate. My mom told my dad, in private, that he couldn't make someone else's child participate in the rosary. My dad was dead set on my friend doing the rosary with us. My mom ended up bringing my friend home and no one from my school wanted to come to my house after that. Older men sometimes do weird things when confronted by mortality. We usually call it a midlife crisis. Asian here living in an Asian country. Whenever we step into a home we always take off our shoes. Either before we enter the home or at the door. Visited a friend in the US. He walked into his house with his shoes on. Walked up the stairs with his shoes on. Walked into his room with his shoes on. Slumped onto his bed with his shoes on. As an Asian, I was very unaccustomed to that. I took off my shoes at his door and he thought I was weird. My mum does this. She lives in her shoes and has the dirtiest carpet ever. Before I came to Korea and lived with her I didn't think much of it, but after spending 7 years in Asia I now think she is the weirdest person ever. Her shoes are now off at the door, every time. No door for the bathroom, only a curtain. The stuff of nightmares. My neighbors had a miniature horse for a few years. Doesn't sound too crazy until you know that this was in the suburbs. They would walk it like a dog and it was pretty neat. Fun fact, the manger's manual, or whatever it is, for the Cinemark movie theaters states that the only animals allowed in the theater are service dogs, and in rare cases, service mini horses. It's something about my own house, or rather my parents house, s. You know how parents will have a shrine of their children's pictures? Over fireplaces, bookcases, on the refrigerator, usually showcasing their beautiful children throughout various stages of development, school pictures, prom pictures, etc. My parents had a few of those scattered throughout the house. There's five of us kids, but only four kids are showcased. I'm completely absent. I didn't notice this till my late teens. Girlfriends would ask these baby pictures are adorable. Which one is you none of them are? When questioned, my parents stated we just don't have any pictures of you. Fast forward to current times, I'm in my mid 20s, live on my own, and my parents are divorced, each living in their own respective homes. One shrine is now divided into two shrines in two house. Still, only featuring photographic evidence of four stroke five children. Again, I am left out. Again, when questioned, I just don't have any pictures of you both parents retort. I'm not adopted. I'm the middle child. I'm the intelligent, clear-headed one. My role in the family was the mediator, the communicator, the problem solver, the teacher. I'm also the only child that did not rebel against his parents' authority. I'm not going to say my parents don't love me, but I can say that they didn't bother keeping any picture of me. Just my opinion. Your parents are dysfunctional, and they raised four dysfunctional kids. They accidentally raised an intelligent, caring, level-headed individual like yourself, and they just couldn't relate to all of that sanity. They don't have pictures of you because you're better than them. It's the only rational explanation I can think of, honestly. Had an overbearing friend who constantly needed attention. Finally go to her house for the first time and find out she lets her ferrets run around their single wide and crap everywhere. There were also dirty clothes piled in every room. Oh the ferrets like to hide in it. I like animals and I hadn't ever really petted a ferret. So I reach down and the thing is crawling with fleas. Literally there was almost no patch of fur that didn't look like it was moving from all the fleas. She noticed me cringe and said oh don't worry. I think he thinks they are snacks. He is always trying to get them with his mouth. No B. Your ferret is probably getting bitten left and right and itching like crazy. Now that is just downright sad. My friend's family had a no shoe rule and a no sock rule. We live in New England. It's freaking cold in the winter. No socks was cruel and unusual. He had slippers. But I'm not bringing slippers to go over and play Commodore 64 so I just dealt with it. Stupid rules. I once watched one of my school acquaintances hold his mother at knife point because she wouldn't let him make popcorn. I freaking cried trying to talk him down because I thought I was about to watch someone die. He was very adamant on stabbing her through the neck. I'm the weird one here. When I was little, my grandmother bought one of those plastic sandboxes. This was in the 80s. But, here is the kicker. She hated cleaning up the sand. So instead she filled it full of peas. Dried peas, 
Little green ones. Yes, like the ones you eat. So, fast forward to being a parent and I see one of those when my eldest is a tiny tot. I turn to my wife and say, we can buy him that and get a 50 pound bag of dried peas. The look on her face told me I'd fricked up, and she doesn't let me live it down. I'm the pea kid. Sand gets everywhere and it's a bee to clean. I think dried peas is pretty smart and the off chance a kid decides to eat it at least it's better than a mouthful of sand, still dirty but still better than sand. I was about 9 and my family went on a trip with one of my then friends from school and his family. They're nice enough people but had weird mannerisms and were strangely formal. Anyway, the one weird thing I noticed was that every now and then they'd each go out of them room for a moment and come back in. Thought nothing of it after a while and kind of forgot about it. One night the kids are just chilling in the bedroom while the adults were in the lounge. Few beers were had and they got a little merry and allegedly by mistake. My dad let rips a huge fart. The scream that came from my friend's mum was blood curdling and everyone kind of rushes in to see what had happened. She got really embarrassed and explained that they never farted in front of each other. It was a little awkward after that but pretty funny. Staying at a family friend's house while on holiday in Paris. I got scolded for flushing the toilet. Apparently that was only necessary after an especially bad smelling movement. Flushing down anything else on its own would be a waste of water. They would just let most shoots stew until the bowl was full. I guess everyone has their own priorities but emo hygiene has to come before penny pinching? Kinda the same when I stayed at a guest family in London. They didn't refill the bathtub after someone was in, they only emptied it after the whole family used the same water for bathing. Five people. Water was black after that. Spent mortar round in the bathroom. Never got a serious answer why it was in there. Not a mortar round. It was an anti-aircraft casing. They never put anything in it, either. It just lived in the bathroom, empty and perplexing. My mum has a spent artillery shell that she uses as a vase. She picked it up on a visit at her uncle's grave in France. Killed by a sniper in World War 1. A local farmer said she could have it as a souvenir. They are still plowing those things up decades later. My grandma's neighbors had a daughter who was my best friend for a few years growing up. They had a nice house. With nice bedrooms. Clean. Always made bed. Because they all slept downstairs in the living room. The dad on the couch, mom on the love seat, and the kids on the floor. All we did was play in her room, but if I spent the night, on the floor I went. I remember at the time, my friend's parents had a random adult toy room that they let their kids play around in. Both parents were openly be and never hid anything about fricking from their kids. My friend's dad was a little too happy about having too many kids, six total. 5 girls and 1 boy. We later find out later he'd roughy his wife and molest the girls when she was passed out. So happy we never had sleepovers there now. Thank god he's now in prison. Bastard. Holy frick that's dark. At first I was like a. Hey, that's kinda cool that they're trying to destigmatize being be curious while having an active private life but holy frick. Suckers like that ruin everything. My friend's dad using his phone to video orbs. Which were just bits of dust being picked up on the camera because of the light. I tried explaining and he was insulted. I don't think he likes me now. A series of stuffed squirrels in various action poses. I went on a date with a really handsome, nice guy. He was a kindergarten teacher. Went out to dinner. Very romantic then a walk around his neighborhood. Things were going well so when he invited me into his house I said sure. Walked in. Everything normal. Then went into his bedroom. He had a huge poster of Pat Tillman in the corner with accompanying shrine beneath. A confederate flag covering the ceiling. Swastikas. Nazi stuff. ETC etc. Needless to say, I fled. <laughs> Slept over at a friend's house in high school. They would have a radio and or TV on in every room at all times throughout the house. Nuclear family of four. Even when sleeping. And it seemed completely normal to them. Went to a friend of a friend's apartment. Yeah should have been a warning. Cause that never ends up good. Anyways. We get there and he's cooking spaghetti. And invites us for a bowl. Sweet. I ask to use the washroom. He goes. Sorry I can't leave at the moment. As he was draining the pasta. I look over my shoulder and there's the toilet. In the corner of the kitchen. Like 10 featuring away from the stove. Beside the fridge. 
It really soured my appetite. I've never seen anything like this ever. That's illegal in a lot of places. Some illegally converted buildings do that to save on the costs of sending plumbing to another room and because of space constraints. I went stayed for dinner at a friend's house during high school one night. Getting ready to eat were friend's dad, friend's mom, friend's older brother, friend, me, count em, five people. Friend's mom walks out with dinner. It's like a big bowl of steamed veggies, which looked fine, and a plate with a piece of steak and like two pieces of grilled chicken. The plate hit the table, and everyone but me lunged for the meat. It was freaking survival of the fastest. It was like when a pack of dogs get a deer. Five of us at the table, three pieces of meat, at my house. Mom served dinner all portion up in portions proportional to how much each of us eat. Which I guess might seem weird to how they ate. But it was the weirdest thing I ever saw at someone's house that they thought was completely normal. Opposite viewpoint. We had a b-day in my house and I didn't think much of it. Friends wanted to take pictures and talk about forever. I put urinal in my bathroom. My male friends love it. Women are 50 stroke 50 love it or hate it. All women that have lived with me wind up loving it. A friend of mine had a framed contract with Jesus that their whole family had signed and put on display on a little easel. Nobody found it funny when I remarked that Jesus had neglected to sign it. I was always shocked at how loud people were. Even now, I'm in dorms. People are so loud. They just blare music out of their rooms and yell in the hallways. That crap wouldn't fly at my house. This was the one thing I hated about dorm life. People were so loud, even at night during the supposed quiet hours. The rars were useless and never did a thing about it despite all the complaints from everyone. My house never had any family photos on the wall or anywhere in the house. So one day I went to my friend's house they have some family photos hanging on the wall. Every time I come to her place I feel like I am entering an art gallery. I view all the photos and give myself a deep thought about the photos like why are they posing like that? Why choosing that outfit with that color etc. My best friend in grade school was Mormon and came from a big family. Three sisters and five brothers. Whenever I spent the night I was forced to shower with the boys. I guess they showered in groups of three. The sisters all liked to shower together so I guess I was left to shower with the boys. I expressed my reluctance to be naked with boys but was forced to undress and join them. Where they would giggle and poke and prod me until I was crying. I was 7 and the boys ranged from 4 to 18. What the actual. That's awful. You have been visited by the comfortable garlic bread of good back support subscribe to up dude reddit in 3 weeks or never sit comfortably again you have a lot of time for this one I understand if you're busy no rush. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.